Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our old school first person shooter tutorial series. Now our game is almost complete. The final thing we need to do to make this feel like something that actually feels like a game is to add some sound effects into our little scene and a little bit of background music too. So with this in mind, we're going to first of all lay out our sound effects and we're going to create a script that will allow us to control our different sound effects in our game. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create an empty object that we'll call audio controller. Then I'm going to go into my assets that are included, again linked down below, same assets we've been using since the beginning of the series. We're going to grab in our sound effects folder here, I'm going to grab all of these sound effects and drag them into our scene. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that they don't play on awake and that they also don't loop. Then I'm going to go to my music folder and grab this level music, which I'm going to I'm going to rename the object itself to be uh, background music. And this one will play on awake, and we'll also make sure that this loops in our little level here. Okay, so with that done, I'm going to select all of these, make sure that they're a child of the audio controller object, so that we can collapse that down, so it's not taking up too much space whenever we need to. And then we're going to create a script that will allow us to play these sound effects. So let's go to our scripts folder. And I'm going to right click and create C sharp script that we'll call audio controller. And we're going to attach that to the audio controller itself. Now, obviously, at the moment, we have our background music set to play on awake and will loop. So if I go ahead and play the game here, you can hear we now have a bit of intense music which immediately feels a little bit more like this game is alive. But of course, when we shoot our bullets, well, nothing's happening. Uh, that's not really great. So let's make sure that we can have those sound effects happening. So let's then go to our audio controller, and I'm going to open up the audio controller script. And then, much like we did on our player controller, where we made a static player controller instance so that we could access it from different objects, on my audio controller, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a public, sorry, public static audio controller. Oh, that didn't do the right thing at all. Audio controller that we'll call instance, and then we'll create an awake function, which will set the instance to be equal to this. So that's going to allow us to access the audio controller. And then we're going to need a few variables. So we're going to create a public audio source. First one we'll, we're going to create is one for the ammo sound. So we've got all our different sound effects here in our little scene. So I'm going to create one for each of these. So we've got ammo, we have an enemy death sound effect, an enemy shot sound, we have a gunshot sound, we have a health sound, that'll be our health pickup, and we've got a player heart sound. So with all of those in place then, we're going to need uh, functions to be able to play each one of these. So we're just going to create a whole bunch of functions. So we're going to have, first of all, public void play ammo pickup. And then what I'm going to do is, um, actually no, we'll set up this function first and I'm just going to copy it and make changes to the name and stuff for each individual object. So for playing the ammo pickup effect, we have the ammo here. And obviously what we'd want to do is say ammo.play. But what we also want to do is make sure that if the player picks up two pieces of ammo really close together, like so close that the sound effect would still be playing, we don't want it to just continue playing the same sound effect. When you pick up another one, you want it to reset and restart the sound. So for that, before we play the sound, we're going to say ammo dot stop. So that's going to stop the ammo sound effect and then play will make it play from the beginning again. So I'm then going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in there. So let's just paste in a bunch for each one of these. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So let's paste in a few more. There we go. 
you've got plenty of them there. Let's go through then and add make changes for each one. So instead of being playing the ammo pickup, we'll have play enemy death. So then this will be enemy death that stop enemy death dot play. Then next up we have the play enemy shot function. So this will then be enemy shot dot stop enemy shot dot play. Then play the gunshot sound effect. Gunshot dot stop gunshot dot play. Uh, what do we have next? Then we had the play health pickup sound. So then this will be health dot stop and health dot play. And then finally we had, I believe it was the player hurt sound effect. So then this will be player hurt dot stop and player hurt dot play. Okay, so we've got these functions set up, but of course at the moment we've nothing actually calling them. So let's go through and set up where they should happen. Well, let's go with our ammo pickup first of all. Well, obviously that should be on our, where's our ammo pickup scripts. There we go, I have it open over here. And what we'll say is when the object is picked up by the player, we'll say audio controller dot instance dot play ammo pickup. Oh, I just noticed when I was doing that there, back over here, I left the capital A in our health pickup sound. There we go. So we've got our ammo pickup being played. Then let's go through each of these. So the enemy death is obviously going to be on our enemy controller. When the health goes below zero, play, sorry, audio controller dot instance dot play enemy death, like so. I'm going to add an else statement in here because we don't, we only want enemy death to play if our health is below zero. If it's not below or equal to zero, well then audio controller dot instance dot play enemy shot. The next up on our list, if we go back here, is our play gunshot sound effect. So that's going to be back on our player controller. There we go. And down here when we press the button, and we're instantiating a new bullet. We're going to say here, audio controller dot instance dot play gunshot. While we're here in the player controller script, let's also do the player getting hurt. So when we take damage here, we're going to say audio controller dot instance dot play player hurt. And then finally, when we have our player getting a health pickup. So I know we skipped this to get the player heart a second ago, but that's only because we we're in the player controller script. But when we get a health pickup, we also then want to say on our health pickups, audio controller, actually, no, we won't do, although it doesn't matter for scripting in Unity, we could put it down there. We'll try and keep things in a logical order. So we watch, logically want this to happen before the object is destroyed. So we'll say audio controller, dot instance dot play health pickup. Okay, save that. And now we can go back here into Unity. And once all that compiles, go to our audio controller and let's set up these various elements over here. So ammo, enemy death, enemy shot, gunshot, health, and player hurt. Now, obviously we're not doing anything with the background music, but that's simply because we only have one piece of background music playing in our levels. If you have multiple levels that would have different background music in those different levels, all you have to do is put a different 
uh, audio clip in this uh, object here and it would work perfectly fine. So let's test all this out. Let's go ahead and play the game and see how it all fits together. So we've got our nice shooting sound effect working correctly. Let's go over to our room over here. Let's see what happens with our enemies. Oh, we're getting hit by our player. And destroy him. Huh. Maybe our sounds are just a little bit quiet. Let me just check this out. I couldn't hear the enemies getting hurt there. We might just try and turn the background music down a little bit. Just to see how this works. Yeah, our, our sounds are playing correctly. They're just a little bit unbalanced. And this is kind of where some audio design comes into play. It, it, you need to kind of see what's louder and what's quieter and things like that. Uh, but we are getting our sounds working correctly. Actually, it didn't go do any of our pickups. So let's just run down here, wait for our doors to open. And if we go over here, we get our nice little pickup sound effect. Uh, and you can now get a feeling that the game feels a little bit more alive. It makes things feel a little bit more real when you're getting uh, interactions with the wall. For example, you're firing our shots and it makes things feel like you're actually hitting something. Our, our enemies' sound effects could probably do with being a bit louder, so that we know we're actually doing some damage to them a little bit better. But you can hear our health, our player being damaged, that's the kind of glass shattering sound. Uh, that means our health is going down. And overall, we now have our audio system working correctly. So again, it kind of becomes at this point just a matter of sound design and finding out what works better for your game. But we now have a fully functioning old school retro first person shooter game. So there you go. If you're interested in designing more of this game yourself, obviously you'd need things like menus and things like that. You can check the description down below where there'll be a link to my free Udemy course to create your own menu systems for your games, which will obviously apply very nicely into something like this. And obviously from here, it's kind of just up to you to go and design different enemies, different movement patterns for those enemies, different levels, as many levels as you want to, but you can play, take these basic ideas and build them out into a fully featured game using just these methods. So thank you for watching this series. I will be back with more tutorial goodness very, very soon. We've got lots of cool things planned for the channel in the near future to come and have a bunch of fun and make some cool games along the way. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, follow along on Twitter for all the latest updates, Follow Games Plus James on Twitch for live streams where we're going to be developing a whole bunch of new things, including a new game that's coming along the way. So if you're interested in all that stuff, make sure you hit those buttons, follow everywhere that you possibly can, and join me soon for more gaming goodness.